What's up guys, Marcus here from Studio One Expert, and in today's video we're going to be having a look at how I created my data zoom macro that I use in most of my videos. So as most of you know that we have a data zoom in the very bottom right hand corner of our range window, we've got this little area, if we click we get this slider, and we can bring up our audio waveform data zoom so that we can see certain areas in more vertical resolution. Now this doesn't affect the gain at all, it's just a means of being able to see things a little bit more clearly. And in a lot of the videos I do, and in my workflow that I use, I tend to use this quite a bit. So for example, if I was working on this, you know, uh, audio waveform over here, and I was trying to really zoom in here to, you know, do some editing for some chopping samples or something, I would go ahead and I would do a data zoom. And what that would do is just simply amplify this and it would give me more of a clear indication of my zero crossing point. So for instance, I could go ahead and split that there, add my little fade in, and I would know that this sample was cut right at the exact beginning of this area. Just go ahead and undo that for now. Now, as most of you know, I come from 15 years in Pro Tools. So one of the things that I adapted to with working in Pro Tools is I got really used to having my left hand doing keyboard shortcuts while I'm working with my right hand on the mouse. And I developed some pretty decent muscle memory doing that. So what I've done is I've actually gone through and all the things that I like on a keyboard shortcut, if Studio One didn't have a keyboard shortcut for that, I've gone ahead and I've mapped those out to macros. And in some cases, I've modified some of the keyboard shortcuts in Studio One to be macros that maybe include more steps of that. And the data zoom is a really good example of that. So for example, let's have a really quick look at the behavior of the way that my data zoom works here. As I click my keyboard shortcut, it's stepping up in course steps. And then as I get all the way up here, by one or two clicks, I can return myself back to my default view. So if I go ahead and click this slider here, now you'll notice this is really fine movements, but as I'm stepping through, these are actually individual steps. If you were to go ahead and map these out in a macro. So let's have a look at the two macros that I've set up over here. I'm gonna click this little tab over here, which opens up our macros, and then I can click this wrench icon, and then we're gonna open up our macro organizer. Now the two ones we're gonna focus on here is data zoom in and data zoom out. So let's click the data zoom in, we'll go ahead and click the edit tab, and as you can see over here, I've got four zoom data zoom in commands stacked up on top of each other. Okay, and I've also titled that data zoom in just so it's easier for me to search. Now if we go to the data zoom out, we'll click the edit tab here. I think I've got about 50 of these stacked up on top of each other. And like I said, the reason for that is because I want it to return to my default view. So by clicking that data zoom out keyboard shortcut, once I map my macro out to that keyboard shortcut, by clicking it once, it usually returns me back to the default view, rather than me having to press it more than one time. All right, so let's go ahead, I'm gonna click cancel, let's go ahead and how, see how we would you know, create this macro from scratch. So it'd be pretty simple, same steps here, macro, we're gonna click this wrench icon, open up the macro organizer, we're gonna click the new tab, and then I would need to search for this function. So when you're searching for functions, it helps if you know at least a keyword or the category that it's in. So for instance, I know that zoom is in that command that I wanna use, so we'll go ahead and click zoom. And it just so happens because of alphabetical order, you'll see that our data zoom in and data zoom out are at the very beginning. So I'll go ahead, click this data zoom in over here, and I'm gonna add this five times. And then I could come in here, and then I could say data zoom in macro, and then after we're done that, you can give it a description if you want. I would just have to go ahead and press OK. And then of course, I would do the same thing for data zoom out. And in the data zoom out case, we'd go ahead and we'd search for our zoom again. And I'd grab my data zoom out and I'd wanna add this as many times as I wanted to. So for example, I like to do you know even increments of 10, 15, 20, 25, 25 or 50, something like that. And then we go ahead and we do the exact same thing here we'd go ahead and we would title this one to something that we could recognize. And when that's done, we'd go ahead and we'd press OK. All right, so I've already done these two, so I've just canceled out. Now the next step is we need to come to our preferences, wherever you find your keyboard shortcuts. And then I'm gonna do a search for the macro title that we created. So for instance, I know data was in that title. You can see that it's pulled up the macros here and I've got two different options, data zoom in and data zoom out. Now I've already gone ahead and programmed these to some keyboard shortcuts. So my thought process for these is the plus and minus. So you can see that it's come up here 
and we have the first one for the zoom out. I've used the minus, and this is right under the F10 and F11 key. And then for the data zoom in, I've used what my mind visually sees as the plus, which is also obviously the equals. And I've gone ahead and I've used the plus and the minus for my data zoom out and my data zoom in. And to do that is very simple. All we have to do is select the option over here that we're looking for, and then we tab in here, we enter the key, we assign, apply, we press OK. So after that, we essentially have our macro that we've programmed, and then we've assigned that macro, those string of commands, to run off one keyboard shortcut. So I'll go ahead and close my macro over here, and you can go ahead now and see that just like we had before, I'm able to quickly do my data zoom macro. So this is for anybody who is interested in having that programmed out to a keyboard shortcut using macros. This video is for you. Anyways, I hope you guys got something from this, and we'll talk to you later. Cheers. Thank you.